A. So since Wargames Atlantic uh, produced their plastic kit, everyone and their brother have been collecting partisans. And I can totally get this. Um, the, the Wargames Atlantic plastic kits have all of the things that I love in a box. There are a lot of minis there. There's a lot of possibilities. There's a lot of possibilities of how to uh, actually assemble the miniatures. And you can sort of, they're, they're e an easy fit if you want to uh, do some kit bashing with uh, Warlord Games and, and other producers, right? So, so the miniatures that you get in that box, you can make a lot of stuff with that. It's really brilliant. Um, but, and there the question comes, uh, what would I do if I was starting a new partisan army? Um, so this is one of those videos where I built a partisan army list. Um, of course, with the main focus of it being slightly competitive. Um, can it even be made competitive? Maybe. Um, there are some things that it can do and a lot of things that it can't. So there is that. Um, and, and it all depends on how you deal with the fact that the partisans as such have no armor at all. Um, they can have captured tanks, um, but that that's not normally seen at tournaments, right? Um, so if we're just running a tournament straight list, which is what I would normally do, I am a competitive player, right? Um, then, then they're going to be very limited. Uh, and that is the main thing that we have to worry about. And maybe also uh, the main opportunity that they have. They have sort of one build that you can do, and I'm going to show you what that is. So, partisans, let's go. I am going to share my screen as we've done before. And I'm going to build a partisan list and what I would do if I was starting out partisans again. And if I had bought like five boxes of um, War Games Atlantic partisans. So here we go. So we are at my uh, easy army here and I have brought up the partisan reinforced platoon. Um, as you can already see, their roster is slightly different from what we see in other rosters. It's very limited. They haven't got that many choices to pick. So what we have to do when we're running partisans is we're going to have to use a lot of our points on infantry. That makes for a very, very specific build. So what I'm going to try and build here is I'm going to try and build a horde army that is close combat uh, strong. Why? Because it's the only thing that you sort of can build. Um, the partisans are not particularly good skirmishes. They don't have rules that, that sort of enforce that. They don't have the armor at all. They have some anti-tank capabilities. They have some uh, indirect fire. But what they are mainly there for is that they have some very large infantry units. So we're going to have to run infantry and we're going to have to run it well. Before we dig into the infantry, though, I want to run all the support I can possibly find that is any good. So as per usual, we're not going to do the medium machine gun team. Um, even though you can run a machine gun, uh, you really should not. It is a medium machine gun. It is fixed. Don't ever do that. It's not worth the points. So what we are going to do is to run all the other support units that we can. So a flamethrower, we're going to make it regular because we have a lot of points for a thousand point list. And as per usual, we're also going to buy a, a transport for that flamethrower. So there are three possible transports. There's a truck, there's a heavy field car, and there's a normal civilian car. The only one that makes sense is the civilian car. It can transport up to four men which means that we can give it um, maybe a peer team or something else um, in the transport as well. That will make sense. So let's buy some anti-tank. And notice that you can get a bazooka. There were bazookas dropped for the uh, partisans in Europe at times. So let's buy a regular bazooka and they can go in the car with the flamethrower team. That is one Ooh, dangerous little um, civilian car. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, we're also going to buy a mortar because we need all the indirect fire that we can get. We're going to make it regular and we're going to add a spotter because we don't have that many uh, mortar slots. We can't go double mortar. We're going to need to go single mortar and that means that we're going to have to be protected from snipers. So the spotter will be needed. Um, we're also going to go RT. And unfortunately, it's all light guns. And the only thing that's worth anything is a howitzer, because that can fire indirectly and directly. Don't go with the anti-tank uh, gun. A light anti-tank gun is not worth it. A light anti-aircraft gun maybe at times could be worth it. It has double shots, but still it's not very good. Here, we can get it regular or inexperienced. We can't get a spot of this. So normally I would say go inexperienced, right? Just you save 10 points. But that would mean that you can't really shoot it directly. But in the build that we're going to make, that will not matter. So we're going to run it inexperienced. We're going to go all the indirect shots that we can. We're also going to run a sniper team up. We can get him inexperienced. Now, would we want that? It is a very cheap sniper to have inexperienced. And it's still a sniper. It just means that he shoots on a four plus instead of a three plus. I think actually I want that. Um, still very, very cheap. Now we can go and spend points. I don't know why we would spend points on all this, but we can go and spend points on our infantry and we should. There are really five types of infantry that you can build. Um, more or less all of them are worth it. The partisan late war squads are worth it because you can build huge squads of regulars, 200, uh, 20 men, 200 points, and they can get Panzerfausts. So that's, that's pretty much worth it. Um, but I think we can do better. Maybe they're worth it just for the Panzerfausts, though. Um, then we have the inexperienced squads. Again, 20 men, inexperienced. They cannot carry a Panzerfaust, but they're very cheap and there are, there's a lot of infantry here. So I think we're going to go with a full squad of inexperienced, 20 men, and we're going to replace all their rifles with pistols. Because what this group is going to do is not, it's never ever going to shoot. Um, unless it's like, there's nothing better to do. It's either going to run towards the enemy or it's going to go down. Those are the two orders that I want to give to this always. If there's something really threatening, darker steward, I may go down. Otherwise, I'll just run at the enemy at the end of a turn, see if I can charge. Run up into the midfield, then run up to his deployment zone and then run and charge. That's what I want to do. So I need a lot of men for that, and they all need to have pistols, which will make them even cheaper. And we're going to fill the squad with these pistolero units. Because the enemy will not be able to kill that many troops. So and I'm going to have to buy a lot of plastic war games Atlantics for this army to work. And I think I'm going to buy the full three units of inexperienced detail. All of them downgraded to pistols. We don't need the rifles. We need the pistols, though, because that will make them all tough fighter. 20 men that are tough fighter that charges you, you're going to die. It doesn't matter what you are. You can be Gurkish, you can be uh, Polish Lancers. If you get into close combat with this unit, you are going to get take losses and a lot of them. So. We still haven't used half our points and we spent almost everything that we could. So we're going to need to find something very expensive. And, and fortunately, we do have that. We have partisan cavalry, um, which you can buy 120 points. That's really good. And they can charge. I don't know why, why they would be able to do that. They're not trained at all. And the horses are devil, definitely not cavalry horses. Uh, they'll be, just be civilian horses, but apparently they can charge. Um, so you can build a whole army of partisan cavalry. 
and just charge at the enemy. I don't know why you would, because you got guerrilla fighters. Now, guerrilla fighters is, again, you can buy a huge a group of these, like 20 men, 260 points, and make this into a true Death Star type of unit. And you can even go extremely expensive and give them submachine guns. I'm not going to give submachine guns for everyone. Um, I think with a veteran unit, you need someone to take rifles and you need someone to have the tough fighter. So I'm going to do a mix where 11 of my men have the submachine guns and the rest will be just riflemen. Nine riflemen. So that was a lot of points we just spent, right? And we also need a lieutenant. It'll be a second lieutenant, cheapest one I can get. No, sorry, I am going to give him two extra men. Um, that will mean that he can survive uh, predatory bombardments. So I can always start him on the table. And it also means that I get some free SMGs. That's good. So we have 160 points left. And should we go guerrillas or should we go partisans? Hmm. I think the right way to go is more guerrillas. Um, you might already notice that this is not the perfect um, arm built to do. I'll, I'll talk to you in a minute about why that isn't the case. Um, we're going to buy as many SMGs as we can. That, uh, my math is off here. Yeah, for four points, we're going to yeah, drop a few SMGs. Actually, not what, you know what? I'm going to take the SMG off the NCO and another guy. Right, there we are. That would be my suggestion. Now, is it good? No. What do we really need here? We need, oh, well, we need so much stuff, actually. Um, you know what? I'm going to rebuild. I'm going to rebuild. I'm going to cut this down to 14 gorillas. Um, maybe even 12. Let me just check it out something. I wanted to put a gorilla unit in a transport. A truck. I want a truck. They can transport 12 men. Let's do that. And I'm not buying the pintle mounted MMG. So what I am doing is I'm making a 12 man unit and I want all of them to have the SMGs then. There we go. Now they can go in the truck being pushed up as a Death Star type unit. I'll do that twice if I can. Let's see, we have the points left over. We can even give these SMGs. Let's do that then and give SMGs. So what do we have? Yeah, we have enough points for another truck. Let's do that. Right, go. Right, we have seven men or seven points left. I use an officer. What is that even? Oh, that's a forward observer. It's actually uh, cheaper than the uh, regular forward observer. Uh, I'm still not going to buy it. But let's use the final points on a horse drawn limber. Eight points. We don't have the points. Oh, that sucks. <laughs> I really wanted to use those points. Mm. Can we shave off a few points somewhere? I don't think we should. I think this is it. This is the best I can do. So 14 order dice, so it's even at a, a nice point in the order dice. Uh, 993 points. I really wanted those last seven points to be used somewhere. Can't really see where to do that. Um, it would have been nice having that Death Star unit of large veterans. I don't think we're, that it's better. Um, this way, 
we we make it across the uh, uh, the 10 order dice limit and into the 14 order dice, and I think that is way better. Now, the gorillas will go in the trucks. They will be pushed up into the center where their SMGs are deadly and where their their 12 veterans with um, some machine guns. They are going to be so scary for the enemy still, and there are two units of them now. So really scary. They are a lot, a lot of points, right? They are very expensive, but they're also very scary. So they are the distraction that will mean that our partisan squads can run up early game. Um, we'll even I'll even use the trucks as cover. So I'll turn the trucks sideways and let the trucks die. If the enemy wants to shoot at them, they'll become uh, wrecks. Um, if they don't, if they're not shooting at them, they're still cover for my partisan squads running up into the center table. Twenty man partisan squads, and he's also dealing with twelve man veteran uh, guerrilla fighters. This is scary. This is really really scary in close combat. Um, I wouldn't want this to fight against Japanese fanatics, but nothing really wants to do that against any normal army especially against maybe a skirmish army like the US, this would be extremely scary. Um, the flamethrower is there to deal with enemy armor and units that we can't charge. The bazooka is there to deal with enemy armor at range. The mortar, and the sniper team, the light arty, all of that shoots at anything that might threaten our ability to push up our assaulters. So can this be competitive? Yes, it is competitive. I think I could win games with this. I might even win a tournament, but there will be hard counters. There will be armies that, that I really can't deal with. Uh, Finns maybe especially going down in ambush and just shooting at me as I move up. That will not be a good day. So there will be things that, that will be difficult for it to deal with, um, but it, it does have some teeth. Um, so it's it's basically an inexperienced uh, assaulty horde. That's what it is. So that is how I would build a uh, a partisan army right now. Um, maybe not the best, but definitely not the worst thing you can do. And it would definitely mean buying a lot of war games Atlantics, because I am at uh, two times twelve, twenty four plus sixty for the infantry. So I am on. I am approaching 100 minis on the table with um, Lieutenant and, and Artie. Um, that is a lot of bodies that the enemy will have to chew through. A lot of bodies. And some armies will not be able to do that. Simply not be able to deal with you assaulting that many men at him. Is it historical? Is it thematic? Not at all. Not at all. Um, I don't think you would have seen uh, l large hordes of pistol-armed partisans anywhere in the world charging at regulars. That won't happen. So this is purely for competitiveness and for the sheer craziness of, of doing so. So, right. That was my attempt at making a partisan list. Good luck, everyone, and good luck with uh, building your partisan lists. I hope you do better than I think I would do. Um, let's see. Cheers.